I'm here in one of the oldest olive groves in Dasa. Some of the trees here are like 700, 800 years old. If you can hear some bells behind me, it's because uh, some cows just rode through. Pretty soon the farmers here are gonna start putting out their nets to catch the olives, and that means that summer is over and autumn is here. On the one hand, I'm sad because a lot of my favorite summer foods that I've come to love over the past few months are going away. They're no longer in season. But on the other hand, it means I get to look forward to the food of autumn. To see what I have in store, Ava's gonna show me three pasta dishes today that are perfect for fall. one of the best pasta dishes that you can have in Italy during fall. In order to do this pasta dish, I need some egg fresh pasta. If you've never made egg fresh pasta before, it's real easy and you can learn all about it in this video right here. Yes, but I want it. That looks pretty wide. Is that what I think it is? Is that pappardelle? Bravo, Arpero, you learn. Pappardelle is an egg fresh pasta, like fettuccine, like tagliatelle. The difference is that the pappardelle are wider than all the rest. As many of you probably guessed, the, the pasta that we are going to cook is pappardelle with porcini mushroom. I'm a very lucky girl because this mushroom comes from my dad who went into the wood and catch, harvest, catch. Hunted. Hunted, okay. Find the porcini mushroom. Now, if you are not lucky, me, lucky as me, and you don't have uh, fresh porcini mushroom on your hands, you can use also the dried one. Be sure to soak the dried porcini mushroom for at least 20 minutes in warm water. We start with a clove of garlic, some good olive oil. My dad gave me the porcini mushroom with one condition, that I'm going to use spicy pepper, Calabrian spicy pepper, because he likes pasta with mushroom spicy. I just sauteed the mushroom for two or three minutes, no more, and now I'm going to add some tomatoes. And we let it cook covered for about 10 minutes. mushrooms are perfect cooked and we cook our pappardelle.
So a mushroom walks into a bar and the bartender says, get out, we don't serve your kind in here. And the mushroom says, but why not? I'm a fun guy. That's very, it's a very bad joke. That is an extremely bad joke. It's a very bad joke. What isn't a joke is how amazing this smells. And uh, I had to wait until you finish your stupid joke. <laughs> for eating my amazing pasta. As we all know, you gotta eat pasta right away, so we should try it. Oh no! Hey, that's my pasta. Bon appetito! appetito. Oh. Okay, shout out to your dad for making it spicy, because that's super good. I was going to say that, uh, yes, my pappardelle are good, but my father's mushroom. They are amazing. Ava's dad, has taken me mushroom hunting many times, and I'm convinced that he is hiding his secret places from me because every time I go with him, we don't find a thing. But then he'll go out later that same afternoon and come back with a big basket full of mushrooms. But you should know that every mushroom hunter uh, doesn't reveal uh, his places. At least he gives me mushrooms to eat. No, no, see, as, as much as you want, as long as you want, uh, if you can find the fresh porcini mushroom. Nothing with them. Yeah, we never find fresh porcini in the U.S., but in some places I think you can get them. I'm I'm pretty sure that yes, you can find the fresh porcini. Maybe the only difference uh, is that uh, the taste of the porcini will be not the same because the taste is given by the soil. Mm. But try to find them, and you can have an idea on how good this pasta is. Super amazing dish. Obviously a perfect autumn pasta recipe, but before we move on to the next autumn pasta, a quick word from today's video sponsor. We have been working all summer to outfit and stock the Locanda. It's kind of like moving and starting from scratch. We needed pots and pans and all kinds of cookware. We decided from the beginning that we didn't want to buy just a bunch of cheap crap. We wanted instead to get stuff that would last forever, that would really do justice to the food that Ava cooks here. That's why we were very excited to partner with Hexclad. We had heard about Hexclad before. We heard that it was uh, Gordon Ramsay's favorite pots and pans. We gotta hand it to Gordon Ramsay. He sure got this one right. Hexclad sent us some pans just to try out, and it was the first time that we had sort of the, uh, the holy trinity between the performance of stainless steel, the non-stick abilities of non-stick, and the heavy duty durability of cast iron. Ava uses nonstick cookware a lot, and if you get a really cheap nonstick pan, the nonstick coating goes away real fast. They're terrible at searing things. Like you could never imagine cooking a steak in a nonstick pan. But Hexclad has this hybrid technology, which gives you a pan that's nonstick, but you can like sear a steak in it. There's a laser etched hexagonal steel ridges that give you that searing power. Then the nonstick surface in the valleys are constructed with high grade non-toxic Japanese coating and infused with diamond dust for extra toughness. It's oven safe up to 500 degrees. It's dishwasher safe. It's metal utensil safe. It's finally possible with one pan to have it all. Like I said, we're trying to buy pots and pans that will last a lifetime and Hexclad will. All of their products come with a lifetime time warranty. You will literally never have to buy another pot or pan in your life if you go with Hexclad. Right now you can get an even better value because you'll get 10% off for a limited time. Visit hexclad.com, that's H-E-X-C-L-A-D.com. And when you check out, use code PASTAGRAMMER for 10% off. A big thank you to Hexclad for sponsoring today's video. One of the most traditional fall product in all the world is squash. And today we are going to make a pasta that I'm sure you are familiar with, but not made in this way. I'm using what in Italy is called delica squash. In, uh, in America and all the rest of the world, maybe this is not as, as uh, kabucha, kabucha. What I'm going to do is just make some small hole so the squash will cook faster and much easier. We are going to roast the squash, but actually you can also steam the squash. Important is that you don't boil it because we don't want the water. Mm -hmm. 
the squash is done. Make sure that uh, it's enough cool that you can easily touch it. It shouldn't be completely, completely cool, but warm, it's like you don't have to burn your hands. Now I scoop, I scoop. I have a problem with English. Are you trying to say you're scooping it out? I'm trying to say this. Now we mash the squash. So you're gonna make a pasta sauce out of mashed squash? No, Harper, I'm going to make squash pasta. I'm going to make gnocchi, Harper. There are on the, on the web uh, so many recipe, recipes about uh, squash gnocchi that require just two ingredients, squash and flour, and they try to do a light version. But in my opinion, once you start to cook something, or you do this in the right way, or you don't do. So, because I don't like the light version, I'm going to use the third ingredient, which is potatoes. So even in your squash gnocchi, there's potato. See, because gnocchi are made with potatoes. So here the guest, is the squash, it's not the potatoes. The potatoes uh, is at home right now. Now, this is just a potato that I boiled until uh, I could put inside a fork. After we mash the, the squash and the potatoes, these work like the normal gnocchi that all of us know. So this means that you're going to add the flour. Not too much because otherwise you will have uh, small pieces of stone, no? but not too little, otherwise your gnocchi will just disappear. And if you want to understand maybe better, here in some place there is a video where I explain how to make the perfect Italian gnocchi without eggs. Because with the eggs, there are no gnocchi. The only thing that I'm going to do different from a normal gnocchi is adding some cheese. I'm going to add some pecorino cheese because I really like the pecorino, but then feel free also to add some parmigiano or, uh, yes, or parmigiano or pecorino, you don't have. <laughs> Those are the options. <laughs> A big choice, no. As much as you want, keeping in mind that we should taste also the squash, so don't over put pecorino or parmigiano in your gnocchi. I think that is the first time I've ever heard you warn that there could even be such a thing as too much cheese. Not the reason, but we want to respect the squash. It has an amazing color. They are perfect for Halloween. our squash potato gnocchi are ready, it's time to cook them. And I'm going to make a very quick, easy and famous sauce, which means an Alfredo sauce. A sort of Alfredo sauce, because usually Alfredo sauce is made with butter and parmigiano, but today instead of parmigiano I'm going to use pecorino. With every kind of gnocchi, when they start to float, they are ready. Which means that we can transfer the gnocchi in the butter.
mind's a little bit blown right now because not only is this squash gnocchi, which I never imagined, but come to think of it as a really good idea, but it's also the Alfredo version of it. Or not really Alfredo, because it's pecorino. Ah, oh, it's kind of like cacio e pepe. You know what, Arthur? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and then... Some extra cheese, of course. See, si, because it's okay. There is nothing like too much cheese in the world. Don't over uh, put uh, pecorino or parmigiano in your gnocchi. Do we want to respect the squash? Yes, but the squash are respected because the, the gnocchi tastes like squash. Uh, the sauce is another thing. Ah, okay. All right, let's try this. That looks so good. Buon appetito. Stop it. Me, stop it to it? <laughs> Just in general, stop it. I know where you're saying stop it, because squash is one of your favorite food. It is. I know how much you like gnocchi. Mm -hmm. I know how much you like pecorino. Mm -hmm. Put these the three, three things together, you can say stop it. <laughs> that is so good. I realize that this is like the weird version of gnocchi. But it's maybe my favorite. This is maybe the best plate of gnocchi I've ever had. Squash gnocchi is something that... Oh my gosh. If somebody never tried, they should try. Okay, guys, for real, this, this, tr try this. I'm really serious. This is, this needs to be known by more people. And can you imagine if there is a leftover baked? Oh my gosh. With some bechamel oh my God. and the, extra cheese. The problem is there's not going to be leftovers, and you know that. Speaking of baked pasta dishes, that's something that I don't eat a lot during the summer. It's hot. You're not really into baked, heavy, cheesy dishes. But it's getting to be that time of year. Where some warm, uh, warm, uh, warm, uh, warmth. Warm. Some heat from the oven is very appreciated. You want to show me an autumn baked pasta dish? Si, Arpiaru. But after I finish this. This time of the year is the period in which they harvest potatoes. So today I'm going to do pasta with potatoes, pasta e patate, but not the famous Napolitan one. I'm going to do the Calabrian version. For this dish, we need to slice the potato very, very thin, thin like that. One of the characteristic of this pasta dish is that uh, every ingredient uh, will go raw. It will be cooked, though, but all together. I'm going to use a whole peeled tomatoes. If you don't have whole peeled tomatoes, feel free also to use a tomato puree. We season the Mash the whole peeled tomatoes with olive oil and some salt. We start with pouring a little bit of tomatoes in our pan and then we make a layer of potatoes, like you are doing a sort of lasagna potatoes. A little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil, and because it's Calabrian, some good Calabrian oregano. I'm going to use uh, penne ziti rigati, which means uh, a penna rigata. Which kind of pasta you can use? Penne, tortiglioni, rigatoni, fusilli, every pasta that works well in you. And yes, I'm going to add the, the pasta bro. That is so weird to see you just dropping raw pasta into that. You know what? This is a very traditional and ancient recipe, which means that we in Calabria invented the one pot pasta. We add another generous layer of tomato sauce. There isn't in the world any baked pasta dish that doesn't require cheese. 
and I'm going to use a pecorino cheese from Calabria. You don't want a hard, very aged cheese. You need something that is more or less, I don't want to say soft, but you can easily cut and it will melt a little bit. But that's not the only cheese. No, because this time we are going to use the aged, grated pecorino. A little bit of salt, because remember that the pasta has not salt. And we restart with another layer of potatoes. Because this is our last layer, I'm going to add the cheese. And now I had the tomatoes to cover the top like you do with a normal uh, lasagna. Remember always that pasta needs a liquid to cook. And because there isn't uh, a lot of liquid in this uh, pasta, pasta al forno, we need to add a little bit of water, not too much. And now we can close our layer with extra pecorino cheese. And last but not least, some breadcrumb. And actually last but not least. Yes, but this is not an ingredient, so this is a way of life. Bake it at 230-250 degrees for at least 30 minutes. Take out the aluminum foil and bake it for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes until the pasta, the, the water that is still at the bottom will dries out and on top there will be a nice crunchy crust. All right, so I have a confession to make. For a little bit there, I lost faith in you. When you put the water in, already I was like, what? Water in a pasta al forno, that's weird. And then when you were baking it, you could see, cause you put it, made it in a glass thing, you could see the water in there. And even when you took, when it was like almost done, I was like, this is gonna be watery. This is gonna be weird. No, And then when you just cut this slice, it came out perfect, perfect crust on top. You know a pasta al forno is good when it doesn't just come out like a, spooned slop, you know, you can actually cut a piece out. Well done. I should have known better. The pasta and the potatoes, they absorb the water. You let the pasta out of the oven 10 minutes, and this is the result. All right, well, let's see how it tastes. It certainly smells good. Bon appetito. Oh, damn. It's unbelievable. It has a name. What's the name? Because the name, this is pasta e patate alla triedda. Alla triedda? Yes, where triedda or tiella or tiedda is the, the actually the actually plate where you cook the pasta. Back in the past, they were doing in the terracotta pot. And it's one of the first one pot pasta that exists. Am I against one pot pasta? No, if the one post pasta is made in the way it should be made. I've always loved pasta with potatoes, but I've never had it baked like this. It is super good. It is how, like you said, it's kind of like a potato lasagna. Pasta and potatoes together are like eggplants and tomatoes. Are like, I don't know, squash and um, help me. Pecorino, apparently. Mm. I know you cooked this as an autumn pasta but I'm going to put this solidly in the category of anytime. This is an anytime pasta. Also because this is a 
also a live version of pasta al forno. So because in the normal pasta al forno you have meatball and salami, an egg, a ton of cheese, sauce. That's for winter. We'll save that one for winter. That's for winter. Please, please. <laughs> when you really need. This <laughs> yes. is, it's chilly outside. That one is, it's cold outside. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below what's your favorite food to eat in the autumn. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action. They made friselle, the stale bread. It is intentionally made stale. We made a whole video about it. You can check it out up here. Also, the friselle is perfect for fall, summer, winter, spring, whatever you want. A good friselle is always a solution for lunch or dinner, even for breakfast. You can put anything you want on it. Absolutely. Also, some pasta and potatoes. <laughs> On the free side, that should be very interesting. Thanks for trying the recipe, it looks amazing. If you want to become a pasta grammarian, just hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media at Pasta Grammar and definitely tag us in a pic if you try any of these autumn pastas. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. Did you invent this idea of putting the squash gnocchi with, with like a butter and pecorino sauce? Yeah, but all that is I meant it is like. You can make a cheese sauce like a quattro formaggi. See, but you've never seen anyone do this. I'm the first one. But because you need a strong cheese to compete with the sweetness of the squash. Otherwise, you have a sweet gnocco. You don't want a sweet gnocco. You want a good gnocco. That's a good gnocco.